Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers, and I'm looking today at an interesting book from Waterside Press. It's called The Curious Mr. Howard, Legendary Prison Reformer. It's written by Tessa West, and in our view, it's a really excellent book because it's a, a, a special type of biography. My wife Elizabeth and I have written a review of this book, which appears on the web and in various other places. We've given it the title, The Latest, Most Authoritative Biography of Prison Reformer John Howard. And jolly exciting too. This is the book here. It's under 400 pages long. picture of Tessa at the back. You can see the front and the back an interesting uh, cover. There are some very useful photographs. You can see various plates there in the, in the book itself. Uh, there's also a very useful index at the back. And as I say, the book is eminently readable. The question, of course, that you're all asking is, who was Mr. Howard? John Howard is his name. And after him is named the Howard League for Penal Reform. This man's work cannot really, in my view, be underestimated. Forget about what we've written in the review. Let me talk about him in a rather different way. And that is that he... He's described as curious because he's a rather different sort of man from the one that you would normally meet. Jeremy Bentham is quoted on the back of this book as saying, one of the most extraordinary men this age can show. And John Wesley said, one of the greatest men in Europe. And that's really because of what he did in a very single-minded way, which was to cause the ability to, to make reform in terms of penology a very important issue and set an agenda so that we have a much more modern approach to dealing with people. Bearing in mind at the time he lived there were a very large number of capital offences. Let me tell you a little bit about the book anyway. We've said whether this book by Tessa West will end up on the bestseller list of fascinating biographies remains to be seen. It has only just been published by Waterside Press, but if it doesn't, it ought to be. That's our basic view. Not only is it meticulously researched, it's a riveting read. We met Tessa not very long ago, and she explained to me that she'd certainly put a huge amount of effort and uh, research into this book, and she was coming at it very much more from the point of view of, of, of social issues and, and biographical uh, detail rather than the legal context which I'm really looking at today. Not only does the book deliver enlightened insights into the life and achievements of John Howard, it does a good job in throwing further light on a bygone, day, a bygone age, labelled by most historians, accurately or not, as the Age of Enlightenment. So as I say, if the name John Howard isn't particularly familiar, just think of the Howard League for Penal Reform. He's an example of how just one individual, however eccentrically brilliant, controversial and perhaps unconventional, can make a difference by changing hearts, minds and attitudes worldwide. And that is the case with many people who actually do something within their lifetimes which has been of great lasting significance. Now, as West has said, the reputation of Howard rests squarely on his philanthropy and his efforts as a prison reformer. His key achievements were to visit numerous prisons in the British Isles and in many other countries, recording the terrible conditions he found. And then he obviously present, uh, presented this in various publications. The intention was to convince people of the need to, inf uh, to improve prisons. The book itself covers the, it's about just under 400 pages, it covers the entire span of Howard's life. It looks at what he did. He was indefatigable, clearly, and eccentric. What is doubtful is that he was in any way mad or seriously disturbed, or that if he had lived today, he would have been diagnosed as suffering from autism or Asperger's syndrome. These are unfortunate comparisons, but West more or less dismisses these matters, although she concedes and said to us, looking at Howard through this lens does offer some perspective on his peculiarities. I'm not going to dwell on that because I think it's his record and what he did which is the most important thing. Prisons in Howard's time were used mainly for people on their way to the scaffold or transportation. Apparently uh, there were both public and private prisons, the latter being little purgatories, halfway houses between imprisonment and liberty. 
Bedlam, of all places, was in this category, and West shares the, in the insights of her amazingly detailed research into original sources to reveal just what these establishments were like uh, before the curious Mr. Howard established himself almost single-handedly as the champion of the most despised people on earth. I think it's a very important book, and it will be one that will be of interest to anybody who covers this field of criminal law and sentencing. Let me conclude by saying that this factual and readable account of Howard's eventful and productive life offers a wealth of eye-opening revelations. Definitely this volume is a must-read, not just for anyone interested in social history or criminology or the 18th century, but for the general reader as well, and anybody who's interested, as I say, in this particular area. Biographies can be awe-inspiring, informative, and just a trifle heartbreaking, and this is one of them. So thank you very much to Tessa and to Waterside Press for, I think, something that's very useful and something we need for our library. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.